Man, I love probability. We're going to do a couple of probability questions today. These are ones that were requested by one of my students. So I just thought it'd be fun to make a couple of videos. So let's do it, you know? So here we go. We got a bin contains 12 identically shaped chocolates. What's the point of that? Chocolates are never the same shape. You got like the squares and the diamonds and the little rolled up ones. Man, but oh, now I'm hungry. No, I'm not hungry. I just want some sugar. All right, identically shaped chocolates of which eight are strawberry creams. If three chocolates are selected simultaneously from the bin, determine the probability that they are all strawberry creams. Okay, so there's lots of ways to do this. You could actually list it out. You could do some probabilities. I am going to use a tree because I want you to get used to seeing a tree diagram and using a tree diagram. So we come up to it, and the first event is the first chocolate. Okay, now I know you're saying, but it says they're selected simultaneously, Mr. Bobwater. It says right there, simultaneously. Yes, I understand that. But when you pull things out simultaneously, what you're pulling out will also affect the other things that you're pulling out because you can't pull out the same one twice, right? Because you're pulling them all at the same time. So obviously, somehow you've got to consider the effect of pulling out one on the others. Now, this is going to have exactly the same effect as if you had pulled them one at a time without replacing. Now, you could also think of it in this way. Even if you said you're going to pull them out simultaneously, that is not physically possible. When you reach into the bag, one of them is going to be touched a fraction, a millisecond, before the other. And so therefore, that one was picked out first. And so that then decreases the probability of other things happening. So here's our first chocolate. Either it is strawberry or it is not strawberry. All right, now the probability of being strawberry is 8 out of 12, which means the probability of not being strawberry is 4 out of 12. Now from there, we're going to go on to the second event, the second chocolate, okay? Now, the second chocolate, if the first one was strawberry, the second one could be strawberry or not strawberry. Now, there's only 11 chocolates left, and since we took out one strawberry, then only seven of them are strawberry. Now, 7 out of 11 are strawberry. That must mean that 4 out of 11 are not strawberry. Now, the same thing is going to happen down here, but the percentages are going to be different. Okay, so for after being not strawberry, that means that one of these four is gone, which means there's only three not strawberries left out of 11. Now, if three out of 11 are not strawberry, well, 11 minus 3 is 8. That means there's 8 left, so there's still 8 strawberries. Now, we go on to the third chocolate. We do the same thing. Now, are there other ways to do this? Yes, but again, I want you to see the tree diagram and visualize it and see what's happening. So again, we could get strawberry or not strawberry for each of these. And I always try to keep them in the same order just because then it'll be easier for me later. So then, oh, what just happened? Ah, this touch screen is going to annoy the heck out of me, man. All right, so 8 out of 12, 7 out of 11. Now there's only 10, so that means there's 6 out of 10. Uh, here we'll go to the not strawberries, which means that's still 4 out of 10. Okay, now there are 4 out of 11. So here now there's only 10, so this should be out of 10. Before there were 4 strawberry, uh, four not strawberries. So if I got a not strawberry now, there's only 3 not strawberries, which means that this one is going to be 7 out of 10. Now if we go here, there were 8 out of 11 that were strawberry. And so now there's only 10, and 7 of them are strawberry. And then here we've got 3 out of 10, therefore, that are not strawberry. And then for the last one, 3 out of 11 were not strawberry. If I pull out another one, that means there's only 2 left out of 10, which means that 8 of them are still strawberry, which should make sense because if there were 8 strawberries to start with and all I've pulled out is not strawberries, then there should only be strawberries left. Now, at this point, we can answer actually both of these questions. The probability that they're all strawberry creams, well, find the path 
that has all strawberry creams, which is this one right here. And so I would just go 8 over 12 times 7 over 11 times 6 over 10, and that would give me the answer. And so you can do some reducing here, the 6 and the 12. You can reduce this to uh, 4 and 5, divide both those by 2. And so we end up getting 28 over 110. 2 times 11 is 22, two times 5 is 110. So there we go, 28 out of 110. And you're welcome to turn that into a decimal if you'd like. Now, here's the probability that none of them are strawberry creams. And so this time, you're looking for the path where none of them are. So none, none, none. So this is the path that none of them are strawberry creams. Again, we're going to multiply them together. 4 over 12 times 3 over 11 times 2 over 10. These reduce to 1 over 3. The 3s reduce. The 2 reduces to 1 over 5, which leaves us with 1 over 50. Five. So there you go. There's the probability that none of them are strawberry creams. Now, all the other probabilities you could get by following their paths. And if you were to get all eight of these things, if you were to add all those together, you should get one because these are the only possibilities. And so that should add up to 100% or one. All right. So that's that question. I'll go ahead and stop it and then we'll do another one. Ciao.